What you're looking at is the um, worksheet generator that I found online that I used to create your activity for today, these practice problems. And I had to choose the number of problems that I wanted that use these different skills. So I thought it would be a good idea for us to know what these skills mean. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, combining like terms, x is on both sides, distributed property. I'm going to try to explain those for you so that um, you can understand them and hopefully complete these problems. So this is the, um, the thing that we'll go through here. Um, first, first thing you have to be aware of is inverse operations. What is it and how do you, how do, you do it? Uh, I think Austin demonstrated this yesterday, but um, yesterday in class we created our own problems. So we started with something like n equals 3 and then we did stuff to it. We did some operations to it like let's say n plus 4 equals and then 3 plus 4 would be um, 7. So inverse operations you are doing the opposite of whatever the person that created the problem did. So the person that created the problem started with n equals 3. They did some operations. You have to figure out what they did and go backwards from what they did. So when you see, when you're given this problem, n plus 2, you know that the person who made the problem started with that answer and um, started with their answer, added 2 to both sides, and then gave the problem to you. So with inverse operations, you are doing the opposite of what has been done to, I'm just going to write n, but I mean the variable. So you're doing the opposite. So here you can see that the person started with some number, they added 2 to that number, and they got 4. You probably already know the answer is 2, but the inverse operation is um, minus 2. Since the person who made this added 2, you're going to subtract 2. So I subtract 2 from both sides. Those will cancel. I'm left with n equals 2. A great idea is to, with all of these problems, is to plug in this number for n to see if you make a true statement. So does 2 plus 2 equal 4? Yes, it does. That means this is the answer. I did it right. Now the distributive property. The distributive property is multiplying a number by all terms in parentheses. Parentheses is how you spell that. So it happens when you see something like, like this. Now, the way to use it is um, multiplying 4 by that n, so that would be 4 times n. The sign stays the same, plus 4 times 1 is 4. So I just distributed that 4 that multiplied uh, the n plus 1. 12 stays the same. The person who made this, what they did is they took n, whatever n was, they added 1 to it, and then they multiplied that whole thing by 4. So to solve it, we distribute the 4 first. So I get 4 times n gives me 4n. 4 times 1 gives me 4 equals 12. And now I can solve this like I normally would solve an equation. So I'm going to subtract this 4 from both sides. I'll be left with 4 times n equals 12 minus 4 is 8. Since this is 4 times n, I have to do the inverse operation. I have to divide, because dividing is the opposite of multiplying, divide by 4. So I'll do a little fraction bar for dividing. I'll get n equals 2. And if I plug that in here, 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. So that is correct. The next skill is combining like terms. Usually this is where you um, add or subtract 
variables on the same side of the equal sign. You can also do this with constants, meaning numbers that don't have any variables attached to them. So you add or subtract variables on the same side of the equal sign, and it works with constants too. Constants. So here I've got 3n plus 8 minus n equals 10. I will combine these terms. 3n, three, I've got three n's, one, two, three of them, three n's, and subtracting one n. So three n's minus this n would leave me with two n's plus eight equals ten. So all I did was combine those terms. The plus eight just comes down to my next, next line, the ten comes down to my next line. Now I can solve like normal. I'll subtract 8 from both sides. I'll be left with 2 times n equals 2. And now the inverse operation of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. So I will be left with n equals 1. Let me see if that works. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 8 is 11 minus n equals 1 is 10. 10 equals 10. So I did that correctly. Now what to do when you have variables on both sides? So it looks like this. What do I do? Um, add or subtract variables and remember balance. Remember balance. So I can choose which side I want to add or subtract variables from. So right now I'm looking at n, the variable, minus 5, equals negative 2 n's plus 10. Since you want n to be positive, you want your answer to look like, like this, n like this, n equals something. Since you want your variable, you want your variable to be positive, what I would do is I would add 2n to both sides. That way it cancels this out and it just gives me more n's on this side. So I'm going to add 2n's because a negative, negative 2 plus positive 2 is 0. It cancels. So negative 2n plus positive 2n would cancel. I'll add 2n's to both sides of the equal sign. That'll give me 2n's plus 1n is 3n. The minus 5 drops down equals those have canceled. Equals 10. 10 just drops down. So now I can solve this like normal. I will add 5 to both sides and those will cancel. I'll be left with 3n equals 10 plus 5 is 15. 3 times n equals 15, so I want to divide by 3. That's the inverse operation. I'll be left with n equals, sorry, I know it's tough to see those answers. My camera space is a little small here. n equals 5. Now if I plug that in, do I get the same do I get a true statement? 5 minus 5 equals 0. Negative 2 times 5, that would be negative 10. Negative 10 plus 10 equals 0. 0 equals 0. That means I got the correct answer. So I'd like you to, now that you have these notes, I'd like you to try and complete, not just try, but actually complete all of these problems.